Hello everyone, welcome back. It is the end of August, which means that it is time for my monthly beauty favorites and fails. I am here to tell you all about the products that I have been reaching for over and over for the past month, whether they were new products or rediscoveries. This is where you'll hear me rave about them and tell you why I love them so much. And then once in a while, I have a fail or two or three. This month, I have a lot more favorites than usual. And one sort of controversial fail, and the reason why I say controversial is because there seems to be such mixed opinions or reviews on this particular product. People either love it or they hate it. A lot of you who watch my videos regularly probably can already guess what I'm talking about as far as the fail. So why don't I start with this eyeshadow palette that I have on my eyes right now. I love it so much. This is a recent purchase of mine. It is from Lawless. This is called the One Baby Eyeshadow Palette. This palette contains eight everyday neutral eyeshadows. Six of them are mattes, two of them are shimmers, and this is one of my favorite color stories of all time. To me, it is perfection. You can create everyday looks with this palette, you can create nighttime looks with this palette. The two shimmers in here are extremely pigmented. They are buttery, blendable. The matte formulation is as well. I am just so impressed with this little palette. It's $25. It's perfect for travel. Lawless is a clean, cruelty-free brand, so you can feel good about what you're putting on your skin. And I'm very bummed because I think this is limited edition. So get it while you can. Moving on to what I'm wearing on my cheeks. A couple of weeks ago, I uploaded a fall makeup tutorial, which I am so happy that so many of you are loving. In that video, I used this blush trio from Milani. It is the Cheek Kiss Powder Blush Trio, and this one is called Golden Hour Glow. Again, you can see it demonstrated in my fall makeup tutorial that I can link in the description box. This has three beautiful blush shades in it, and what I've been doing is just taking my brush and going into all three and that's what I've done here. If I want a little bit more of a pop of color, I'll just go into the pink and then just, well, pop it on the apples of my cheeks. Or actually, I've been going a little bit higher, so like kind of in this area. I believe this palette was appropriately named because it definitely gives off that beautiful golden hour glowy vibe to me. I don't know if you've ever taken photos of yourself. I know a lot of people don't do selfies. It's mostly us influencers that do that. But that golden hour light is just phenomenal. It's better than any filter that's available. And I'm just kind of obsessed with this. I hate to use the word obsessed. I hate to use it, but I really am. I cannot seem to stop using this blush trio. I find myself reaching for it over my high-end blushes, my other recent favorites like the Makeup by Mario blushes or the Pat McGrath blushes. I'm reaching for this. Now I want to talk about this blurring under eye powder from Pat McGrath. This was a rediscovery in August. Once again, a couple weeks ago, I uploaded a video. This one was a full face of Pat McGrath. So I went and purchased a few things specifically for that video. But then I also went through what I already owned and this was one of the products. And I have no idea why I don't use this more often, or I wasn't using this more often. This is phenomenal. I'm thinking that I actually like it better to set my concealer than my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder. And that's saying a lot because I adore that powder. It is probably my favorite pressed powder of all time. But this definitely gives more of a brightening effect, I find. It's just perfection for giving me that extra bright under eye without looking like I've just gone way too light with my concealer. Unfortunately, when I went to go do my links for the description box, it was sold out in the light shade. Hopefully it's back, or you can sign up to be notified when it's back in stock. I definitely, definitely recommend it. 
Next up is another product that I used in that affordable fall makeup tutorial. I didn't talk about it at length because it was just part of my skin prep, but I have been so impressed with this Revlon Prep and Protect Broad Spectrum SPF 34 Primer. I had been looking for something to replace this Neutrogena SPF 35 sunscreen that just worked so beautifully under my makeup. I recommended it in many videos, but unfortunately it started getting harder and harder to find and I do believe it's been discontinued. So I'm so happy to have found this. It's very similar to the Neutrogena in that it sinks right into my skin. It plays nicely with my foundation. There's no pilling. There's no whitish cast. It's just such a good sunscreen for every day and it's quite affordable. Next up is another affordable product that you all recommended that I try. This is the Wow Brow from e.l.f. I have been raving and raving and raving about the Ulta Brow Tint to set my brows, or actually with the brow tint what I do is I apply the product and then I go back in with a brow pencil or a brow pen and I fill in and create feather-like strokes. It's been the only product that actually gives me that fluffy brow effect, but this is a close second for sure. And the reason why it's in this video is because it's actually even more affordable and more readily available than the Ulta brand. The Ulta brand is around $10, and usually if you spend $15 at Ulta, you can use a $3.50 off coupon. Sometimes they have $5 off coupons, but this little guy is only $4, and it has a very similar applicator. They're both tiny, which I like, because if you're like me and you have very thin, sparse brows, you want an applicator that is going to not be too large and get all over your skin. I don't feel like this gives me as fluffy a brow as the Ulta, but I know some people don't like that look. Some of you don't want a big bushy brow. Some of you already have really good brows, so you just need a good affordable product to fluff them up a little bit, keep them in place, and for $4, you really can't go wrong. So I thank you for recommending this to me. Next up, I'm gonna talk about what I currently have on my lips. This lip pencil is from Sephora. It's their little lip liner to go, which is only $6. The shade is light brown. I don't know why they call it light brown because I think it has more of a rose tone than a brown tone. Regardless, I think it's a great shade. It glides on my lips so easily. It's the perfect size for fitting in a small purse or clutch bag if you're going out for the evening. Unfortunately, this is a lot bigger, so this combo probably would not fit in a small clutch purse. This is from NARS. This is the Power Matte Liquid Lipstick in a new shade called Le Freak. At least it said that it was a new shade on the display at Sephora. And this is a beautiful pinky nude. You know me, I love my nude lipsticks. I've actually got three more to show you in this video. And I like wearing these power mats under my mask because while they do still transfer a little bit, they're not too bad. So I have a dinner, actually I have a couple of dinners to go to in a couple of weeks here in Las Vegas and we have an indoor mask mandate. So I still am going to be doing full makeup, which means I'm still going to be wearing my lip combos, but I will likely do maybe this combo because it will stay on fairly well. Now that I've covered everything that's currently on my face, let's get to that controversial fail. Isn't it nice that here in the YouTube beauty space we can consider a foundation's performance as being controversial rather than focusing on all the other controversial issues out there right now? Not that we don't care about those issues because I'm hoping most of us do, but once in a while you need an escape and makeup I know is one of those escapes for me and I know it is for you as well. And I personally am quite content keeping YouTube controversies to how a makeup product or beauty product performs. This is in the bag because it's getting returned. 
you know that I'm serious about it being a fail if it's actually getting returned. So many times I'm just sort of meh about a product and I think, well, I'll just give it to someone instead of going back and returning it. But I am going to exchange this Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer for another bottle of the Estee Lauder Futurist. This was just not for me. I have an entire dedicated video to it where I wore it for several days and several different ways and it just didn't work for me. I was not impressed with it at all. Yes, I could mix it in with my Estee Lauder Double Wear and it does look nice that way, but I really like Futurist and I've run out, so I may as well get another one while I'm at the store. So if you're interested in seeing that full review, that's another video that I will link down in the description box as well as links to all of these products that I always have there for your convenience. So back to the double wear share. I did receive one comment on that video that I was not being fair and it wasn't a balanced review because I don't love sheer foundations to begin with. So I went in somehow with a preconceived or a premeditated opinion, which is not true whatsoever. I have tried plenty of sheer foundations that while I have not been personally comfortable with the level of coverage, I felt like they still made my skin look pretty nice. They did a little bit of perfecting, they stayed on. What it came down to is that I just feel like there are other sheer foundations that are better than this. Do I myself wear them on a regular basis? No, I don't, but I think the way I did that video by showing you my skin after several hours in natural light and letting you be the judge, I thought that that spoke for itself. I would think that the proof was right there, that it just did not look good on my skin. My personal coverage preference didn't really matter. I didn't think it was just right there in front of the mirror or on camera. It just did not look good. So this is the fail and it is going back. All right, I hope you have a cup of coffee or tea or a snack because I do still have quite a few products to go through. And up next is another product that I have a dedicated video to. This is the Wet n Wild Always Naked Eyeshadow Palette. I hesitated to even put it in this video because there were a lot of unhappy people in the comments of this video. I had no idea that this palette was not in stock on walmart.com for everyone. I went to my local Walmart. I saw it on the display. There were several of them there. There was also another one called Always Blushing, which I'll get into in a moment. There's one thing I want to address about that palette. But with this one, there were several there. It wasn't on an end cap where they usually keep the more limited edition. They usually put new products there, at least at my Walmart but they also tend to have limited edition products there as well. So being that this was on the main display, I thought I had no reason to believe that it wasn't readily available, easily available. So I even checked online and it was there. So I thought, oh, okay, I bought it, loved it, loved it so much that I felt like I had to do a whole dedicated video to it. And then people were telling me that they couldn't get it, that it was showing as out of stock. And that's happened to me before. When I did that video on the Outlast Extreme Wear Foundation, that same situation was happening. It was available, it was showing as being in stock for me here in Las Vegas, and my husband tried it, and my son tried it, and everybody was able to add it to their cart. Then I had my friend in Louisiana, she tried to add it to her cart, she couldn't. My husband had his brother in Michigan try to add it to his cart, it was showing as out of stock in every shade for him too. It was so strange. So what I did was I reached out to my contact at Reward Style. Reward Style is how a lot of us YouTubers and influencers get collaborations with companies. And I had her reach out. That was not a sponsored video, but I asked if she could find out for me what the issue is. Why am I able to get certain products and other people can't? And the gist of it was that it depends on the stock that Walmart has in their regional warehouse. So if this is sold out at one regional warehouse, or maybe they haven't even gotten it yet, it's going to show up as out of stock on walmart.com. So I think, or at least I hope, that if you are having trouble getting this palette on walmart.com at the time I put that video up, hopefully it's there now or it will be shortly. 
As you can see, this is just a beautiful neutral eye palette. I found that for the price, the formula was truly excellent. You can see the look I created with it in that other video. I've been reaching for it a lot because it is just so versatile. Now, the Always Blushing palette that I did not purchase, but I thought I was going to go back and purchase because I liked this one so much. People were telling me that on the website, it says that several of the shades in that one are not suitable for use on the eyes. And I can see where the concern is because why should an eyeshadow palette have anything in it that can't be used on the eyes? So I too would probably pass on that palette. I have not gone and purchased it for that reason. That is not the case with this palette. I did not see that anywhere on here. It just says not tested on animals. Um, I do think that a lot of glitter products say that on their labeling because they have to in case someone does have a reaction to it. But how many times do you see people using glitters on their lids or in different places that they're really not meant to without any problems? Now, I'm not suggesting that you do that. I'm not at all. I'm just thinking out loud that that's probably why they have to put that disclaimer there in case someone has a reaction. So it's kind of like use at your own risk. You'll probably be okay, but use at your own risk. So I'm just gonna leave that there and just tell you that this Wet n Wild Always Naked palette, if you can find it, I think it's great. All right, so we're gonna move from a really, really affordable palette to a really, really pricey one. This is from Vanity Makeup. This is her signature eyeshadow palette and oh my, is it gorgeous. It contains six matte shades. There are some shimmers. There are some pressed glitters. It is positively stunning. Just look at this packaging. The mirror, the outside, it's heavy. It feels like a $95 palette. And thankfully, it performs like a $95 palette. It's been a long time since I have felt eyeshadows so creamy and buttery, but without a lot of fallout, without any sort of um, difficulty in blending. Sometimes when an eyeshadow is too creamy and too soft, when they're blended, they just create this sort of mess. And it just seems like all of the shades you applied have run together. Vanity Makeup is Actually, I don't even know her first name, but I've been following Vanity Makeup on Instagram for years. I believe she has a YouTube channel as well. She is an incredible makeup artist. She does definitely more glam, full coverage looks from what I've seen. And this is a glam girls must have. Put this on your Christmas wish list. Put it on your anniversary birthday wish list. I am very likely going to be using this for all of my holiday makeup looks or the majority of them. And I know some of you are cringing at the word holidays like Risa, it's only the end of August. But you and I both know that the holidays will be here in the blink of an eye. Okay, because I've talked so much, I'm gonna try to move quickly through the last favorites. Up next is the Nudegasm Face Palette from Charlotte Tilbury. And three of the four lipsticks from the Super Nudes collection. Here are some swatches of the lipsticks. The last shade in these swatches is Super Fabulous. I do like that one. I just can't see myself reaching for it as often. I'm really, really absolutely in love with the other three, though. Supermodel I did already own, and I'm so glad she brought it back because it's just such an excellent, flattering lip color. And this Nudegasm Face Palette... Once again, I have a dedicated video to these products, but I'm going to apply, because I forgot to apply, highlighter. So I'm going to use the beautiful highlight in this palette. It's just absolutely stunning. I think I said in this video too, my Super Nudes video, that um, Charlotte Tilbury knows what she's doing when it comes to highlight. The Spotlight Cream Liquid Highlighter is also stunning. And as with most Charlotte Tilbury products, I am absolutely in love with the packaging. Oh, I almost forgot. Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream Light. I think it was about a month or two ago, I did mention that I was out of my Magic Cream and I was going to try the Magic Cream Light instead. 
so many of you have asked me which one I prefer. Honestly, I think they're very similar. This one has a pump, so I like that instead of having to use my scooper or, yes, my fingers are clean when I dip into the jar, but I still prefer something with a pump. It's not like the Magic Cream is that heavy. Even on my oily skin, I never found it to be just too thick or that it was making me more oily. I think they're both excellent, and I don't really see that much of a difference as far as when I apply the light or the cream under my makeup. Maybe I'm just an anomaly and other people do see a big difference, but I don't. So I think I'm going to keep repurchasing the light just to have the pump. And it is, I'm not saying they're exactly the same. The texture is a little bit different, but it's not a dramatic difference. So if you have oily skin, I definitely think you should give this a try. But if you have drier skin, I think you should stick with the Magic Cream, just because sometimes it's just the feel of a product. It just feels a little bit thicker, so I think you're going to like that psychologically a little bit more. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I've just got two more favorites to talk about. This is a texture spray. It is the Color Wow Style on Steroids Performance Enhancing Texture and Finishing Spray. Now, I don't know if you saw my vlog, my second only vlog that I put up. I was talking about how I was considering getting NBR, which is Natural Beaded Row Hair Extensions, and I do have them in now. If I lift this up, they're sewn into my head. Here it is. I have one row that is sewn into my head. And I'm not gonna lie, they did feel a little uncomfortable at first, but after, I think I've had them for a week, I'm definitely more comfortable with them. I like how it gives me the pops of blonde without having to bleach my hair, because my hair, like me, is getting older and it's more susceptible to damage. So my stylist and I liked that it was a lighter blonde to give me the dimension that I like without having to bleach my own hair. But back to the Style on Steroids. This gives me that real voluminous, beachy look. And with minimal stickiness. I think all texture sprays have a little bit of stickiness, but this one, not only does it smell good, it has, as I said, minimal stickiness. Look at my hair. <coughs> Got some of it in my mouth. So, yeah. Big hair, don't care. Hello. And then lastly, I figured since I'm talking about hair, I'll talk about body as well. I finally, finally got myself some Necessaire body wash. All of my YouTube friends rave about this body wash. So many influencers I follow on Instagram rave about this body wash. And it is totally worth the hype. Even though I got the fragrance-free version, it still has just a very clean, natural smell to it. I like that it has a twist top, so it's not super messy. I use a poof and it lathers like crazy and my skin just feels so clean and refreshed and soft and yeah, I know it's just a body wash, but if you're in the market for a new one, please give this a try. Your skin will thank you, especially going into the winter season. I am definitely going to be trying all of the other necessary body products next. Okay, did I say that was the last product? That was not the last product. I do wanna talk about one more thing these gummies from Bulletproof. I had never heard of this brand. They sent me several different kinds to try. I've got these immunity gummies as well. I've been taking these. I do not like the taste of these. I love the taste of these sleep gummies. Not only do I love the taste of these gummies, three of them completely puts me to sleep better than any other melatonin based product that I have ever tried. This contains three milligrams of melatonin, 100 milligrams of GABA or G-A-B-A. 
This is a blackberry flavor. On the packaging it says, this sugar-free gummy has what you need for a soothing night's sleep. Our blend of melatonin and GABA promotes relaxation and improves sleep quality so you wake up feeling refreshed. Absolutely. I've tried, as I think I said, so many different melatonin products, just straight melatonin, other sleep combination products, and this is by far the best ever. I get sleepy within 20 minutes of chewing three of these gummies, and I do stay asleep the entire night, which is so rare for me these days. So if you struggle with falling asleep, staying asleep, which I know a lot of us in our 40s have that problem, and you've tried other products and have not had success, definitely give these a try. I probably should have looked up how much these cost before I did this video because I don't even know. As I said, they were thankfully sent to me in PR, but I personally don't care what they cost. Unless they're $100 a container, I'm going to be rebuying this product. Actually, let's look. $19.95. Awesome. All right, everyone, that concludes another monthly beauty favorites and fails this time for August 2021. Fall is around the corner. And then, wow, the rest of this year I know is just going to fly by. And it'll be time for my year end favorites. Oh my God, where does the time go? Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do upload new content at least twice per week. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok under the same username, all Risa Does Makeup. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.